zeigen alle unsere Beispiele. Wir beginnen jetzt unsere Runde mit Enzo Favuino. Enzo Favuino ist der Vorsitzende des wissenschaftlichen Komitees von Zero Waste Europe. Er ist sozusagen Mr. Zero Waste Europe, äh, würde ich mal sagen. Ähm, er arbeitet als Wissenschaftler an der Agrarwissenschaftlichen Hochschule in Parco di Monza und ist auf Siedlungsabfälle spezialisiert, speziell auf die Behandlung und die Sortierung von organischen Abfällen. Er hat äh, einige Pilotvorhaben für getrennte Müllsammlung und Abfall, äh, nachhaltige Abfallwirtschaft zunächst in Italien und später in vielen anderen europäischen Ländern begleitet und wird uns heute über die Erfolge verschiedener Kommunen auf dem Weg zu Zero Waste und über den Stellenwert der Abfallvermeidung berichten. Bitte Enzo Favuino. Uh, vielen Dank, Sabine. Guten Abend. Uh, ich kann nicht uh, Deutsch sprechen. Jetzt. Uh, I will turn back to the language of the past, which is English. Um, anyway, uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. I've already taken a picture of the audience and I will tag you all on Facebook. Give me your names and so. However, we are at a major turnaround in European environmental policy this week, this very week global and European environmental policy, because we have got the COP21 in Paris, right after Berlin, I will be going to Paris because at Zero Waste Europe, we are going to present a report on the contribution of re reduction, reuse, recycling and composting to reducing greenhouse gases. And also, the day after tomorrow, the new circular economy package is expected, and so it's worth also watching what might be expected in order to trigger further interest on uh, uh, waste reduction. However, since I have to put everything in context, it's time for clarification because you might uh, wonder yourself uh, what is zero waste. Zero waste is not only waste reduction, but waste reduction plays a major role. Probably not in quantitative terms, it's not the biggest contribution to go towards zero because separate collection is the biggest contributor, but certainly it ranks highest in our wish list because it also triggers awareness on the daily behavior, on what you do with your discards. Uh, but what does zero waste mean, first of all? Zero waste is a strategy which is intended to take the highest value out of, from our discards. And as such, uh, it promotes long-term efficiency in the management of resources. And as the European Commissioner for the Environment, Carmen Uvella, said a few weeks ago, uh, Europe is poor in primary raw materials, and so we have to be rich in skills and wisdom, I would add. And this is why we should be reducing and reusing and recycling as much as possible. Uh, the Circular Economy Package, which was issued in July 2014, was subtitled the Zero Waste Programme for Europe. So it's not only wishful thinking, it's not only a fanciful slogan, it is a working program in order to make circular economy real. And there is a codified and peer-reviewed uh, zero waste hierarchy at international level, which is kept and peer-reviewed by the Zero Waste International Alliance, because it's not possible for everybody to say, my interpretation of zero waste is like that. No, we have got a hierarchy of best and preferable option for whichever material. For instance, when it comes to food waste, we say, feed the humans, as long as it's still suitable for human consumption. Then if it's not suitable anymore, feed the animals, and then feed the soils. Never ever feed landfills and incinerators, of course. However, and there are also some ongoing recognition and certification programs, but I'm here to report about what are the achievements in such municipalities and what is the contribution also by uh, waste reduction. This was the proposed circular economy package back in July 2014. Yeah, uh, very ambitious. 70% material recovery, material recovery, not separate collection. So it's net of the process rejects. In order to get there, we should be separating 80%. So it's by 2030, it's not for next Monday, but still we have to warm up in order to get there by 2030. And then higher uh, targets for recycling, there was also something for waste reduction. For the moment, waste reduction is tabled in Article uh, 29 of the Waste Framework Directive, but it only mandates some uh, uh, waste prevention programs to be defined locally. 
but with no legally binding targets. In the package which was proposed in July 2014, there was a legally binding target for uh, prevention of food waste by 30%. It also bears along a very big ethical impact because you know, by giving efficiency to the uh, uh, agro-industry, we might be feeding the mankind as a whole. However, and then to establish separate collection of organics by 2025. Then, you know, it, this package was scrapped by the new commission in December 2014. They said, we are going to prepare a more ambitious package. What do we mean by more ambitious? For me, 120% uh, material recovery target is sufficiently ambitious. 119, not yet. But it seems from the leaked versions we had in the last few weeks from the European Commission, it should seem quite similar to the previous package. Uh, there will be a slightly lower material recovery target at 65% and unfortunately no waste prevention target. That's not nice. Even though there will be a mandate on single member states to measure and report on waste prevention measures, so this might trigger the future interest in better implementation of waste reduction programs. Question number two, is zero waste achievable? Of course, we have to uh, uh, avoid any, uh, um, any um, suspect of being too fanciful or go on with, uh, just with uh, uh, wishful thinking. But if I take a look at what we did in the past 20 years in Germany, separate collection was started basically in 1982 with intensive separate collection systems. Uh, it's more the, the road we have done than the road we still have to go. So it's worth keeping ambitious. It's worth keeping ambitious. In any case, what matters is the direction, is the continuous commitment to do better and better, to do more and more. And this is why we say zero waste, more than the, than the final destination, is the continued travel to get there. And in this respect, normally what the municipalities do, they start with curbside collection systems, collection at the doorstep, and they make the big jump. They go to 60, 70 percent, and then they implement pay as you throw systems and this makes them gain another 10 to 15%. And concurrently, they start getting focused also on waste prevention and the incredible contribution that comes from waste prevention. I will expand on that a little bit shortly. What might be the results? This is a chart reporting on the results in the first municipality which adopted a zero waste charter in Europe, Capannori in Tuscany. They started in 2007. And as you can see, in 2008, uh, after implementing uh, curbside collection systems, they increased the blue part of the bars, which is the material sent for recycling and composting, but also they started decreasing the total amount of waste. Two years later, they introduced pay as you throw. And with pay as you throw, they had a further increase in the recyclable and compostable part and a further decrease in the total waste amount. Anyway, the goal is minimization of residual waste which is sent for disposal. And when we say disposal, it's destructive disposal, including incineration and landfilling. We want to take the value out from materials, which is the only way in order to fulfill, you know, the vision and the scope of circular economy. However, we've also got the first European and, uh, and uh, uh, worldly uh, zero waste capital. The city of Ljubljana adopted a zero waste commitment. We were in September 2014 at the Slovenian parliament in order to make it official. And as you can see, a zero waste charter has got normally two types of goals, a never increasing separate collection rate, but also a continuously decreasing amount of materials sent to disposal. But mind it, the new metrics of good performances should not be only the separate collection rates. So far, we, we only had the separate collection rates in our uh, European policy. You know? But if it's only se the separate collection rate what matters, there would be no commitment to, to promote home composting because it takes organics out of the separate collection rates. 
it would be no commitment to promote water from the tap because it takes plastics and, and glass away from the separate collection rates. What matters is the combined effect of waste prevention and separate collection. And the only way to measure it is the minimization of residual waste sent to disposal in kilograms per inhabitant and year. This is the way we measure the performances of systems. And as you can see in Ljubljana, the next targets will be 60 kilograms and then 50 kilograms and so on and so forth. Uh, the future is already there. Uh, this reports on one of our zero waste champion districts. This is in northeastern Italy, the district Contarina, covering a population of uh, 530,000 people, uh, 50 municipalities, including the province capital Treviso. It's composed of two sub-districts, but what matters is that they are already at 50 kilograms per inhabitant in year. You know, there is already an European region which is mandating uh, waste management targets in terms of uh, kilograms per inhabitant in year of uh, uh, waste uh, sent for disposal, and it's Flanders. They have got a national, they say national, we would say regional, but it's a national, a national target of 100 kilograms per inhabitant in year. And it's in important to go that way uh, in order to assess the performances of the systems. But the midterm goal for them will be to have uh, residual waste reduced by a further 80% by 2023. This captures the spirit of zero waste. We say we zero wasters are always happy and never satisfied. We're always happy because we rejoice for what we have already achieved. But we're never satisfied because we know there's something better and there is the best always there while we walk towards zero, of course. Best is waiting for us, always happy and, ne and never satisfied. When they tell me, where are you from? I, would, I always uh, uh, reply, uh, do you mean uh, the latest station I've been in, sir? Because actually I come from Europe, I'm working here and there across Europe. But if you mean where was I born or where do I pay my taxes, that's Italy. Even though I'm not here to represent Italy, but I'm here also to report about Italy. Because Italy is an intriguing case history. Because Italy is sometimes considered to be a country which is lagging behind. And indeed, it is in many respects. Waste crisis in Naples, but it, much before, long before Naples, there were 20,000 tons of waste in the streets in Milan in 1995. But probably it was the shocking effect which triggered new interest and new awareness by the public opinion and the decision makers. And this is why we have got a growing amount of municipalities adopting zero waste programs. However, these are the results of many municipalities in Italy where zero waste programs have been achieved. Uh, consider the second tire, the minimized amounts of residual waste in kilograms per inhabitant in year. We have got hundreds of municipalities below 100 kilograms, 310 municipalities below 75, and even some, the lowest ones, achieving 20 kilograms per inhabitant year of residual waste. So if the dirty Italians can play with dirt, you can do it everywhere. If I can make it there, I'd make it anywhere. Liza Minelli, you know. So this sounds convincing. Huh? However, operational approaches, and so we come also to reduction, the importance, the incredible, the paramount importance and the pivotal role of reduction. So far, the European strategies have been based on the three R's. Very well done. In the opening slide, you had reduce, reuse, recycle. And this is where zero waste steps in with the fourth and most important R, which is redesign. In circular economy, redesigning has to play its own role. Because if we, if we have got something which is not reducible, reusable, compostable, or recyclable, it should be redesigned for better reuse or for better recycling and composting. Or it should be phased out from production. Uh, this turns into a zero waste agenda for communities with curbside collection, and these must include the organics. Organics are incredibly important, both from a quantitative standpoint. There is a city in Europe totaling a population of more than one million inhabitants, which is already covering 100% of the population with separate collection of food waste, and it's Milan. And Milan is already around 60% separate collection, 60%. 
uh, the organics are incredibly important from the quantitative standpoint, but also from the operational standpoint, because once you take the organics out, you can sharply reduce the collection frequency for residual waste, rest up fall, which means a further driving effect for better separation of paper, glass, plastics, metals, and so on and so forth. The waste prevention practices in, at the level of responsibility of communities then pay through systems in order to trigger further commitment by the population and then checking the composition of residual waste. What is left in residual waste? Residual waste always blends the mistakes in the system. So it's either a matter of redesigning separate collection or redesigning industrial production. Either or, no third way, okay? Uh, this is what we normally do right away in order to reduce waste and the total combined effect of such actions at the local level may be as high as 15 or 20 percent of the total waste amounts. Uh, home composting, promoting home composting, sustainable event management, the municipalities, they table a local regulation on events, on sustainable events, in order to ban throwaway items and to promote reusable dishes or uh, compostable uh, uh, tableware, at least. But reusable, always preferable over compostable. Water from the tap and the cloth net piece. Let's start from water. Water houses are becoming uh, widespread in many urban landscapes in southern Europe. And they, you know, people, of course, we want to teach the pupils to use the water from the tap, to have the water in the jar and not in a plastic bottle. But also the water houses, you know, people can go there and get the sp uh, sparkling water and still water. And some ask us, but what's the function of uh, still water? You're right, sir. It's the same water they may have at home. So we capture the interest through sparkling water. And then after a month, the mayor sends them a letter. Did you like the still water? It's the same you may get at home. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, OK. Uh, nappies. Nappies are incredibly important in zero waste programs. Try to consider a municipality achieving 90% separate collection. You know that nappies and absorbent hygiene products are as much as 5% in some cases of municipal solid waste. So nappies would make 50% of residual waste in such zero waste communities. And this is why we are working hard in order to promote the cloth nappies. There are also parallel strategies on compostable nappies and recyclable nappies, but there are some shortcomings in those strategies. For the moment, we widely prefer and promote cloth nappies. Tomorrow we will have time to elaborate on that, on the cloth nappies. However, you know, it's 5,000 nappies in two years put on the buttocks of a baby, which makes 1.5 tons, which makes 1,500 euros. So it's a total waste of money and of resources. And this is why we promote the cloth nappies. But it's important, since we know, since we know that the limiting factor for the cloth nappies is the behavioral impact, we tend to convince 50 to 60% of the population they are happy once we present them with a starter kit. We use the influencers, of course, uh, the doctors, uh, uh, the school teachers, and so on and so forth. But we get to 60% of the population. So the only way to improve the system is to establish some centralized laundry services, establishing some local cooperatives, offering services. So we are turning a disposal cost into new jobs and new wages. And that's important in itself. FA Corta, we have got the two main uh, packaging free uh, chains in Italy. One is FA Corta, the other one is Negozio Leggero. But it's important to, to uh, remark that FA Corta was started in Capanori in 2009. Capanori adopted the zero waste program and the context produced the, the entrepreneurial initiative. And, and to, end, to put the icing on the cake, the last slide is the redesigning issue. We always open up the bags of residual waste to see what are the mistakes in the system, and we find an impressive amount of uh, the K-cups, the coffee capsules. We can't stop the world from, uh, you know, changing. Also, you have to consider the use of coffee capsules in offices. In offices, they don't have time to make the mocha. Huh? So uh, we can't stop it. We sent a letter 
to the producers, telling them, this is your responsibility. Please make them fully recyclable or reusable or compostable. And this is why there was so much new design going on with designers proposing the reusable coffee capsules. You use them 300 times, and then the 301st time you put it in the uh, recyclable plastics. Uh, or tabli, you know, it's a self-compacting coffee capsule or the compostable coffee capsule. So all in all is this new redesigning of the system, new jobs, new skills being promoted, triggered by circular economy. But once again, let me tell you, let's keep ambitious, always happy and never satisfied. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.